Hello, Doyle Davidson, Water of Life Ministries, Plano, Texas. We're back for the last, this hour is going to be 50 minutes long. That's a strange hour, isn't it? I want to say hello to Steady and all of his friends in Aurora. We have a very interesting uh, 50 minutes coming up. Okay, the D is going to read the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. Verse 1. But of the times and, of, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Amen. For but when, he's coming. Right. Let's go. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Thanks for reading. I will promise you people, I am convinced that those days are approaching. Amen. Next. Verse 5. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Amen. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for our helmet the hope of salvation. 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love. Oh, you hear that? Wow. Go ahead. <laughs> For their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, <laughs> comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that you none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. 16. Rejoice evermore. Oh, now we're getting into this real tough stuff. Rejoice evermore. Next. Pray without ceasing. Oh, now. Pray without ceasing. One hour, three times a week. Let's go. 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. I'll be talking here in a few minutes how God taught me that verse and to be a doer of it and not a reader only. Next. 19. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Right there you can find out that you have a spirit, body, and soul, and that God wants to sanctify it, set apart the spirit, your spirit, your body, and your soul to God and preserve it blameless, blameless. Well, not everybody can be. Nobody's perfect. Oh, yes, they are. So you can quiet that smart tongue of yours down. I've listened to you all my life, and I don't want to hear that tongue talking to me anymore. Go in the name of Jesus. Next. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Twenty-five brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord Jesus, by the Lord, that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. Last verse. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Faithful is he that calleth you. He'll also do it. Don't kid yourself. He won't call you and then stop. He'll do it. 
what he wants. I want to share testimony. There's kind of several of them in a group. 1970, I'd obeyed God and sold my veterinary hospital in practice in McKinney, Texas, 121 Veterinary Hospital. I built it, owned it, and then sold part and sold all. Obeyed God. Done the will of God. Went to Missouri where I, had a, where I had a farm. Spent a year there. And went to South Florida and managed a small animal hospital in Opelika, Florida. In May 1972, God sent me back to Texas. And sent me over by Louisville and Denton, Texas area. Town named Argyle. I am talking about the making of a prophet and the testimonies of Doyle Davidson are being separated out and they'll be put together where you can read them together. But as when I ride back from Florida in May 72, God had a plan for me. I was going to buy property and uh, practice veterinary medicine and for 10 weeks I had to live in a Holiday Inn in Denton, Texas. It's still there and because I couldn't buy property. I leased the property the next morning they backed out. I leased another property and the next morning they backed out. I was one discouraged person. And discouragement was not a part of my personality. What have I done? Have I missed God? I left a job. Uh, I left a veterinary hospital where I was making plenty of money. And I could have bought it cheap and made a lot of money on it. It wasn't God. And now here I am living in the Holiday Inn in Denton County, Texas, because I thought God told me to come back there. And during that 10 weeks, he was teaching me the Book of Romans, specifically, more specific perhaps, the first five chapters and then on up to 10, so forth, whatever. But I finally drove by a piece of property, six and a half acres, and that little old sign on a post said for sale. And I'd driven by that thing every day for I don't know how many weeks, and that sign was just nailed up there. I made a phone call and that six and a half acres and I became friends and had a, had a house on it that wasn't old, it wasn't a stylish house, but it was a solid built house. Uh, the people that built it had no imagination, but it had uh, some little cracks on the northeast corner, uh, on the end of it, there was a fireplace setting in the middle of that space. I think it was 32 or something feet wide. I forgot what it was. It was a long time. And I asked the people that I bought it from. In fact, I knew the guy's brother that had purchased it from. And I asked the guy, I said, uh, what happened here? These cracks. After all, my dad was a house mover. He moved brick houses. He was a house builder. He was a road builder, a contractor. He hauled all kinds of steel tanks, moved them. So I grew up with that. And... Uh, I knew how to ask questions. The guy uh, was not 
truthful. He said, oh, we had a, a, a leak here on a, a water pipe. And we had it fixed. I said, yeah? Well, that's all right. Especially when you lived in a Holiday Inn for 10 weeks. Did you get that one? That makes you a little less selective. You know that? Amen. So, uh, this, when it, it dry, well, it was dry, and those cracks were there. And, and he said, oh, I'm going to send somebody to fix those. We never fixed them after uh, we repaired the, the, the property. I wasn't sure he was telling me the truth. In fact, he was lying. I found out in time past. After a little while later. So, it starts raining, and it rains a lot in Texas sometimes, and other times it doesn't rain much. And as it rained, those cracks started filling up. And I said, what have I done? No, I said, God, what have you done to me? He didn't talk. So, the cracks are full. We go through the winter. Summer returns. The cracks begin to return. I was not a happy veterinarian, let me tell you. But that was the reason I was there, to get the unhappiness out of me. <clears throat> I finally, <clears throat> I finally determined partially what was wrong. The two beams on the, one on the north, one on the south, were broken about ten feet back because of that fireplace setting on a cross beam on the east end. I couldn't understand why that thing would correct itself when it rained a lot with a fireplace there. That thing's heavy. But after the second year, I said, I've got to find what this is. I was one disturbed person. You can't sell property without disclosing those kinds of damages or actions without paying for them. I talked to God, and one day, 1974, I guess. No. Five. Seventy-five. God said, fix that house. I said, I can't fix that house. Oh, yes, you can. See, I had experience and a lot of it. I didn't want to fix that house. I didn't like what God was doing with me. Any of you ever been in that spot? <clears throat> oh, amen, somebody said. <clears throat> I want a miracle. Heal this concrete. <laughs> I prayed... Every dumb prayer you can imagine. Nothing happened. God said, fix it. You know how. And I did know how. But I did. After all, I'm a veterinarian. And I am not in the construction 
for concrete contracting business, nor do I know anything about running a backhoe. I didn't want to learn. I've never run a backhoe in my life. So <clears throat> I finally said, okay, I'm going to fix this thing. I told Miss Patty, she's in heaven now. <clears throat> that probably helped her get there. <laughs> she, she was unhappy with me. Oh, my Lord. But more than one person been unhappy with me. And uh, <clears throat> God said, in everything, give thanks. Well, this is the will of God concerning you. I said, you mean I have to thank God for this? Oh, yeah. You mean I have to thank God that these beams are broken? And that this, this house floats from, on water when there's enough there? Up and down? Thank God. I was not one bit happy. But listen, I started getting happy. You can complain, kick, rant, rave, do what you want to, but I will tell you now, you will never get God's attention with that. <clears throat> so, there was a man's wife came to, to my Bible study at that house, and, uh, and he had two backhoes, both of them commercial. And one of them he didn't use. And uh, <clears throat> so he came up to see me one day. The guy kind of liked me. And he didn't like what I was, he didn't like what I taught his wife, but he liked me. But it was just God. And uh, he was talking to me about that back hole, and he said, if you want to fix this house, I'll dig, I'll dig out across, I think it was 36 feet wide, and 10 to 12 feet back uh, to the west on the, north, on the front and the back, north beam, south, south beam. I said, okay. And it had a, a large patio uh, around it, starting on the north end, and it was 12 feet, right, 12 feet out to the east, 36 feet long, uh, plus 12, which extended 12 feet past the width of the house to the south. And it had downspouts on it, and those downspouts uh, drained into pipes that he had put under this patio. I could not understand how this thing wasn't working. Anyway, I, I got me a concrete saw, got a jackhammer. Yes, I can run a jackhammer. That's not a problem if you're not upset. If you happen to have a bit of anger, that jackhammer will get you down. Because I didn't get a little jackhammer, I got the big one. I mean, there's a lot of concrete. And uh, you, you, you get a little jackhammer and you'll be forever breaking anything. And I got the biggest one they had, and yes, I can run it, and yes, I can hold it up. And no, it didn't get me down. But I had to let the trigger go a few times or it would have because I wasn't happy. Hot July, no it was August. I was wet all the time. <clears throat> <clears throat> I get the concrete broken out to call this guy. He comes up on a Friday afternoon and he, he brings this it's a a case um <clears throat> Commercial, backhoe, he brings it up, 
It'll do the job. It's a big one. And he starts digging. And in about 30 minutes after he started, a hydraulic hose ruptured. I think I was a child saying, ooh. <laughs> May have been a big child. It's okay. That's what I thought. But he said, no, this is a commercial, and you can't buy these anywhere except in Dallas. I said, yeah. He said, I've got to go to Dallas to get it, but I'll be back. He had a habit that I didn't like. He didn't show up till Monday, but I wasn't going to wait till Monday. And I, by that time, I always had pretty good control of my emotions. By that time, I made sure I had good control. I didn't know anything about a backhoe, about running one. But there was a Ford dealership over on 35 south of Denton. Ford tractor. And I took that ruptured hydraulic hose for a case about 30, 30 inches long maybe. Took it over there just hoping. No, I know now it was God hoping that those things were not uh, specifically made like this guy told me. You have to have this hose to go here, this hose to go there, this go there. So I go over there, I walk in, I lay this up on the counter, this hose, open that case. And the guy stood there and looked at that a minute and said, let me have that hose. And he walked back to a door I could see, and he crawled up on a shelf and reached up on top and pulled this hose off. Now, these hoses are made right at, for right and for left. Left won't fit right, right won't fit left. And he laid that thing up there on that desk, on that counter. He said, someone came in here two years ago and ordered this hose. And they never came back, and it's the one you need. How much do I owe you? Happy. Went back and put it on. Put some blood in that hydraulic. There was so it was low, but there was some he brought with him. I crawled up on that thing and took it out in my driveway and I said, No, oh, you're getting ready to learn how to run a case backhoe. Commercial. These are not these little ones. Uh, well, you guys know that no, you just don't. You just have to find out. And I got out there and played with that thing in a little while, 15 minutes. I said, I'm ready. Well, it just had a few levers. You push this, push that. The only problem is you better have your mind synchronized with your hand. Amen. Uh, what the baseballs call that? Eye something coordination. Anyway, baseball player. Uh, I started digging. And I was careful. Cause you, I mean, this bucket's heavy. You slam it in there and going to right, going right, and you're supposed to be going left and but I, I got that thing dug out four feet wide, six feet, six feet wide, no, four feet wide, six feet deep, all down the end, and and down the north side were 10 to 12 feet, the south side 10 to 12 feet, and it's not, oh, by the way, I was working on the Sabbath.
both days. How could that be? Well, one of you call it Saturday, and the other one calls it Sunday. <laughs> that was confusing to me. But God calls the Sabbath Saturday. You know, <laughs> he's the one that said it was Saturday. But you religious people, you have it wrong. You say, well, why heard some person say, uh, Sunday, that's a an analog or something to Saturday. I thought, oh, you guys, you can come up with anything. Anyway, this guy comes up here on Monday morning. He said, uh, who did this? I said, I did. I didn't have time to wait on you. Well, he said, when you get ready to fill it, let me know. So, I called uh, a large, well, he happened to be a, a man that I knew from Sherman, and they put in light poles and a big auger. Come down here, need your help. Dug those pier holes 10 feet deep to yellow clay. Built steel frames in them, put them in there. Got it all dug out, fixed. And my dad, being a house mover, had all kinds of big house jacks. I said, Dad, need your help. No, well, I'm busy. I know you are in Argyle. You've got to help me. He said, I'll be there. He came. We jacked the end of that house up two and three quarters inches. And I had all the steel in place. I called the concrete people. You're going to like this one. I called the concrete man to pour the concrete, and somehow my bank account was messed up, which was rare it ever was. And I found it out, but you know what the guy did that brought the concrete? He forgot to cash that thing and put it in his wallet for almost three months. Yeah. And every day, I expected the bank to call me. We got that all poured. House was fixed. Took me two weeks to do it. And I pushed all the dirt back and made rose beds four feet wide instead of patio. That's where I started raising roses. And pushed the last dirt in, it rained four inches that night. If that trench would have been open, I'd have been in more trouble than you could imagine. By now I'm thanking God better. <laughs> I'm more thankful. I'm more thankful when the last dirt went in than I was when I was cutting up the concrete. But I knew God had saved my life, or a lot of money. He probably wouldn't have killed me, but I'd have thought so. Amen. That was a remarkable thing to me. But did you know that property, that house, sat there? It never moved. It never moved. That property sold. And I told a very nice house with style is on that six and a half acres. Thank God. But I'm learning what God can do with someone that will obey Him. And in the process of obeying Him, you're going to change. 
and you're going to become more sanctified, separated to God. I have one more thing to say. I could talk a whole lot, but I'm not going to. I bought that property and all the land around it was selling for 8000 an acre. And when I got my house fixed in 75, it was selling for 2000 an acre. And God sold that house, that six and a half acres, in 76. And I made $12,500 on that property. Oh, by the way, the guy with the check forgot he had it. When I got enough money to pay for it, I called him. I went to his, to his concrete plant there at Louisville, and this woman, she said, well, he's out of his farm. I said, well, tell him I owe him some money. She said, you do? I said, yeah. Well, we don't have any record of it. I said, call him, please. Tell him Dr. Davidson's in here, that he fixed his house. That guy said, oh, my God. Tell Doc, I got that thing in my, oh, in my wallet. You know why it didn't cash? Patty forgot to sign it. I knew there was something about it. Gave him an unsigned check. He was stuck in his wallet. That was God. I forgot that she didn't sign it. <laughs> Till I got it back, God was with me in a great way. And I was thankful to get out of there. Oh, was I thankful. How much time we have left? We have 15 minutes left. 15, what? Over 15, 16. 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. Why don't we bring uh, Water of Life boys up here? If the quartet wants to sing first, that's good. Then Water of Life boys follow that, Paul. Is that all right? And y'all finish this thing. And I'm going to sit down and be happy that the house is gone. <laughs>